good morning. I hope you enjoyed listening to the magnificent song this morning. I thought that that would be very appropriate. And if you stay tuned after the lesson, we'll play the same verses in Hebrew. And just can, just in case there's somebody who wanted to hear it in Hebrew. I thank you for tuning in this morning. It's Christmas Eve. I certainly hope that all your running around is done and that you can stop and truly enjoy Christmas and Christmas Day. Take some time. Relax. Stop. And contemplate Mary's song as we hear it today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time of year when we can contemplate the coming of our Lord Jesus. Prepare our hearts again for him. Renew our faith and our hope in a world when we look around that is so troubled. Father, we pray for peace. And know it could only truly come from you. We thank you, Lord, Father, for what you have done and sent your son to us. We ask that you would allow us to worship him in praise, in song, but also in actions and deeds as we try to show the world the Christ. Thank you, God, for this church, this community. Thank you, Father, for the blessings that you give us and help us to reflect you to the world. Help us to do our part. In Christ's name we ask these things. Amen. Well, today we find ourselves once again in Luke 1. What do you remember that has happened so far? Zechariah went to the temple. There he saw Gabriel, or Gabriel came to him, and delivered a message to him that he was going to have a son. He also visited Mary. And then Mary has now come to visit with Elizabeth and Zachariah. And Elizabeth has pronounced who Mary is and who the baby is that she's carrying. And now, at the conclusion of that, let's listen to Mary as she burst forth in song, filled with the Holy Spirit. With all my heart, I magnify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy shows, he shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the holy. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, found in Luke 1, 46 through 55. Amen. Thanks be to God for these words. There's a message in Luke 1, and I want to be sure that you get it. And that message is, never count God out. But there's another part to that message. God never counts us out. God does not give up on us. Later in Luke 3, we see that the genealogy of Christ is given and goes all the way back to Adam. Why? To show 
that we are all God's children, that we come from God, all people, all races, all nations. And that's what Mary was trying to communicate in her song. You could just tell that she's bursting with joy and pleasure in response to what Elizabeth said. She says, in the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. And she has already been counted as righteous early. He has looked on her with favor from a very low status. Now that's one thing you can count on. God will use anyone for his purpose, be it some woman that's beyond childbearing age, Elizabeth, or some child not quite old enough to be having a child, Mary. And so we find that her song, she looks, uh, she, she counts that she realizes that God has blessed everyone for generations past and generations yet to come. And the generations yet to come will be blessed through Jesus, her child. He shows mercy to everyone. From one generation to the next. Unending. But then he, she says some words that might cause us a little concern. She says, he has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. America is fairly affluent as a nation. Therefore, we might be considered among the arrogant. And we might be considered among the proud. So what can we do to be sure that we're not among those peoples? What can we do? How can we go about our lives? Does that cause you concern? Because it caused me concern. <clears throat> we see that uh, Mary has, has reflected that God's strength comes from his arm. And that's a common thread in the Bible. Uh, notice that, that Mary's strong, song is in the past sense, but yet it is for the future. So that's what we're, uh, that's what this is. Jesus was called to this, called, brought about this upside down kingdom. Brought the, the arrogant and the proud down and lifted up the, low, the, the lowly. And this is, this is, uh, we need to pay special attention to this as we contemplate this season of the year. I don't think we can overemphasize what Mary is telling us here, how serious, <coughs> excuse me, how serious it is for us and how serious God is being sure that we contemplate this. And so as we reflect on today, and today will be a joy of great celebration, As we think about these verses, we see that Mary rejoices and that she can hear that she can bear the Christ child. Mary glorifies God for God's power and mercy. Mary looks forward to the God transforming the world through the Messiah. Mary praises God for being faithful to the promises of Abraham. Wow. How many generations has that been? <clears throat> the social, political, and economic 
uh, language of these verses cannot be ignored. It cannot be spiritualized away. It must be heard in the context of which it was sung and the line, the, the line of the prophets who declared it. But Mary's song will be kept in the context of the birth of the Messiah who comes to save Israel and the world. Luke didn't deny Israel's hope, but he also kept Mary's song in a framework about how God was keeping divine promises through the gift of the Messiah. So, how does this accounting affect what you hear about Mary's song today? Mary's song is party music. It's to be joyful. Mary was happy because what all that meant, not for her, but for Israel. She recognized the significance. Mary had relatively little up to this point and had said very little up to this point in, in Luke's gospel. But she couldn't control herself. She couldn't hold it in any longer. Why do you think she sang in the past tense? Jesus would bring about new realities. She was so sure that the song, as if she think at least these things had already happened. Do you find it curious that a young woman like Mary had such insight into what would happen on a global scale? This was a child from a small town. How did she know? had to be the wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit. Do you think that Mary had been given holy insight into what God was going to do through the Messiah? She had to have had that. What did Mary say about the parable and the lonely? Who would find this to be good news? The lonely. Who did it cause concern to? The powerful. The world, the world changing message thickens the plot of what Christmas is about. Is there a way that the powerful and the oppressors can find good news in Mary's song? Well. They can stop their oppressive ways. They can change their hearts. Soften their position about the need. They can humble themselves before the Lord. I would offer to you that that's not a bad, bad way to spend Christmas. The way Mary put it, whether you like it or not, there will be winners and losers. We can't change the fact that Mary said that Jesus will bring about a day in which the proud will be humble and the rich will be sent away empty. But we can get ahead of this judgment and humble ourselves and give generously, especially at Christmas. It's customary to be more generous to others. It's time to take a fresh look at the world, at the world and reevaluate our assumptions about who is on top. And who is not? We can live as those who heard the good news of Mary's pronouncements. So that brings us to what can we do? How will we rethink our understanding of the good news? What concrete changes will we be willing to make this new year? How you live your life? How you spend your money? What privilege and influence do you have? And last, I want to share you with some thoughts that I had myself as I contemplated this lesson. It's hard to ask for help. And I've learned that this year the hard way. You just don't want to ask anybody to help. 
It's not in our nature. We're a proud and independent people. But the truth is that we shouldn't be too proud to call on Jesus. We need him. And we need God to take time for us. And the only way we can do that is to talk to him. So I encourage you to uh, take some time to ponder this this year. Merry Christmas. Come back next week. Let me see. Let me hear from you. And now let's read the prayer that we find in, in the uh, student book. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Merry Christmas. Come back now. Listen to Mary's words as they are spoken in Hebrew. And take time to think about what they say and apply them to our lives. Thank you for tuning in. Shalom lach Miriam. Meliat Chesed, Adonai Yimach, Brucha at Banashim, Uvaruch, Ribitnech Yeshua. Miriam Hagdosha, Em Ha Elohim, Hit Paleli Baadinu Achutim, Ata Uvishat Motenu. Amen. Shalom Lach Miriam, Meleat Chesed. Adonai imach, brucha ad banashim, uvaruch beribit nech, Yeshua. Miriam hakdosha, em ha Elohim, hit paleli ibadinu, achutim, atau vishat motenu, Ah, ah.